And if we dial it back to even youth athletics, you know, if I think of our young basketball players at Canada Basketball, you know, we're sort of specializing a lot younger now. And so you've got basketball players playing all year round. And to your point, we're getting explosive. Uh, so we're generating a lot of stiffness, particularly in the lower leg. And of course, now when we get to 20, 21, 24, we're seeing injuries that we used to see back when I was watching the NBA 20 years ago in sort of 30 year olds. And so I'm wondering, you know, from your perspective, a couple of things is that court time that they're exposed to part of the story here of the increased risk of injury. And, and, and I guess the next question would come around, how, how do we prevent that? So there's a whole lot in there. And the first thing is the, the youth component. And again, my daughter's 14. She's been playing high level sport for a long time. And what you always see in kids, especially kids who start to grow, are what we used to call growing pains. We now call enthesotomies, which is basically at the spot where the tendon is joining the bone, there's a lot of pain associated with that. So you get that in the Achilles, mm -hmm. you get that as Osgood Schlatter in the knee, you get other knee pains associated with it. And, and classically, that was like this growing pain type of thing. We use, again, loading, but then we're going to add into there, we're going to add some nutrition in there. We get dietary collagen in there to provide a little bit more of a stimulus, a little bit more of the amino acids that those tendons need in order to really quickly grow at the rate that these kids are growing because you know, you'll see kids who grow four or five inches in a year. That's a huge stimulus. Your height growth is based on your bones, those growth plates pushing apart. That, that's dependent on collagen. That's the, the thing that's happening is the collagen is pushing apart because you're increasing the collagen content in the growth plate. And then you're mineralizing that collagen to make the bone. The same thing has to happen, obviously, at the tendons, where you're getting this elongation stimulus from the bone. Now your tendon has to grow in length. And sometimes you need to really increase the amount of collagen synthesis you're doing. And we've shown that you can do that by using dietary collagen. So especially in young athletes, that's something that we that we are, are really bringing in. And most of my daughter's in type of when she starts to get things or her teammates have within a couple of weeks of a heavier load together with that dietary collagen in, intake, we see that those, those pains go away completely really quickly. Interesting. So that's the first component. As far as that growth component, you can support that a little bit using some of these nutritional supplements. And keep quick, quickly there in terms of protein intake, in terms of hitting sort of a daily total and dividing it through the day, would that also provide the proline and glycine that we're looking for to a certain degree to be able to support that? And then the supplementation gives us additional benefit or? To some degree. So, so what you're looking at is if, if you're taking in like a dairy-based protein or meat-based protein or plant-based protein, how much of these different amino acids or different substrates you're going to have is going to vary quite dramatically. Mm -hmm. So if you have athletes now who are young, who are being you know, much more interested in a, in a cleaner, more vegetarian based diet. Well, they're not going to get any collagen intake in their diet at all because collagen is only made in animals. And so there you might have to look to supplement a little bit more. If you've got people who eat a lot of meat, maybe you don't have to supplement at all because you're getting a lot of that collagen content, which is the gristly bits of the meat, unless you're one that doesn't eat any of any of the stuff you have to chew. And so you, you can modulate this. And the thing with dairy-based protein, like whey that we always use, chocolate milk is a great thing for just increasing this really complete protein. It's great for muscle. It's great for regeneration of muscle. The thing that it does for the connective tissue is very low in glycine. It's very low in proline. The result is that those amino acids actually go down at, in the period of time after you take, say, a, a, a chocolate milk. And if you need something that's going to support your, your collagen growth, if you don't have those amino acids, they could become conditionally essential for a growing individual. Oh, that's, that's really interesting. Yeah. In terms of uh, being able to support young athletes, really interesting application. Yeah. And then as you get older, now you've got this repetitive stress. And if you're only getting that one repetitive stress, because you're only doing basketball, or you're only in a throwing sport like baseball, yep. or you're only getting that one movement where you're not adding into that. If you're a baseball player that you then do some tennis so you can do backhands and you can develop other musculature and other tendons within the system. If you're only getting that one repetitive motion over and over and over again, and you're not doing any other type of move, you're going to develop and slowly over time, especially with these high jerk movements. And all jerk is, is 
acceleration of the acceleration. So that just means if you do a fast movement, so jerk again. So where I am is my location. The rate of change of my location is my velocity. The rate of change of my velocity is acceleration. Mm -hmm. The rate of change of my acceleration is my jerk. So if I'm jumping, all of my power is going down first and then it's immediately hitting the bottom and going up. That switch from going down to going up, big jerk. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna land out of that. There's gonna be a big contact jerk that happens when I hit the ground. If, I, if that's all I'm doing, because I'm a volleyball player, a basketball player, structurally, if you look in the knees of volleyball players and, and basketball players, about 80% of them have structural defects. doesn't mean that 80% wow. of them have knee pain. It's just mm -hmm. that there is the potential to get that. And the higher you go in your level of play, so the more you get from juniors to, to national level to professional level, the likelihood of getting those structural defects actually increases. And it's just because you get tons of high, high velocity moves. And if you're not doing anything else, you'll eventually accumulate small amounts of damage. And the issue with small amounts of damage is that our tendons and ligaments are designed so that once you have a little bit of damage, that damaged area doesn't get the signal it needs in order to repair itself. And that's where the real problem comes in. Yeah, and I definitely want to circle back to how we can, from a training standpoint, start to address that sort of micro trauma. But if we if we stay on the nutrition side, when we talk about you know supplementation, nutrients, um, are there other things that coming down the pipeline or that of interest to you that might be supportive of connective tissue and tendons, ligaments? So one of the things, so I have a PhD student who um, probably by the time this comes out, she'll be a doctor um, because she's defending uh, this coming Monday. And what she's doing is she's done a lot of the estrogen testosterone work. One of the things that she's been working on is she's been looking at phytoestrogens. So things that you would find in soy like genestin. Mm -hmm. And genestin is interesting because it's a plant compound that looks a little bit like estrogen. And so what it's supposed to do is supposed to bind to one of the two estrogen receptors, not both of them. And what and Ketchy has shown is that when you give increasing doses of genestin up to a up to a relatively low level, you actually see an increase in collagen content within the tendons or ligaments. Wow. And so that's really exciting. And you see a mechanical advantage as well. So that's really good because that suggests that there are things dietarily that we can do that are going to support increasing the stiffness across certain structures or at least making that structure more robust. We know that things like um, epicatechin, which, are, which you find in dark chocolate, also have a positive effect. And we think it works in a different way. We think that the way that that works is by increasing the amount of collagen mRNA, where we think that things like genestin or dietary collagen increase the translation of existing messages. And so that's really kind of cool as well, because it suggests that if you put the two things together, you'd get an even bigger effect. So there's lots of things that we're working on that are coming down the line as far as modulating or, or changing how much our, our tissues make collagen to make these tissues more robust and, and better able to deal with the kind of loading that you would see in an athlete who is really just all about one sport. <laughs>